Hi, this is John. Welcome to another video. And today I'm introducing a brand new feature of Photoshop Elements 2025. And it's the new Remove tool. Um, it's nested with the Spot Healing tool. And you can access it from um, Tool Options or from this um, icon here if it's already showing. Um, so I have this beach scene and um, this tool is powered by artificial intelligence based upon millions of machine learning samples. Um, I want to remove this shadow from the adjoining bathing hut. I would think this would be straightforward for this tool. So I'm going to just paint around it like that and it automatically selects the whole thing. I've probably um, added too much, so I can click on the subtract button and just uh, paint away um, some of the parts that I don't don't want to be removed. Switching back to add and putting in these bits that I do want removed, and um, because I have the um, remove after each stroke unchecked. It gives me the scope to, to refine the selections. That's one useful thing to note. You may prefer to have every stroke removed, um, in which case you put a check mark in this box. So let's um, commit that now. And it's done a pretty good job, I think, um, of this beach scene in, um, in, in cleaning it up. So let's have a look at another beach scene. And I want to remove this um, black deck chair so that I'm just left with the one coloured red. So I'm going to just again simply paint over the the chair. Don't have to be too precise actually and the whole thing gets selected. I'll try and include a bit of the shadow as well. That needs to go and then click the blue check mark. And you can see it's not been quite successful this time. The tool is not perfect but not to worry we can just keep going and we can um, select the bits that have been left behind and um, I'll do the shadow separately. So let's do that. It's taken that away pretty well. So let's just deal with the shadow that's been left. A little bit of the edge of the sand. And again, and there we have it. I think that's um, pretty good. I've got one little spot here which needs to be removed. And we're finished. This next image, um, I want to remove the street furniture, namely these three black poles in front of the shop. And one tip I will give when using this remove tool is you can work on a blank transparent layer. So I'm going to go to the top of the layers palette here and click on this new icon um, button and it creates a transparent layer. So if I work on this layer, um, I'm working non-destructively and protecting my original image. Now when doing this, we need to put a check mark in this box at the bottom here, sample all layers. So I can now start with the um, with the remove tool, which I've got selected here, and I'm going to um, paint over these first two poles. And let's let's commit. I've left a little bit behind here, so let's just go over that and commit. And then this um, third pole, I'm going to just slightly reduce the cursor and paint over that, and then click. Did you see what happened there? Isn't that amazing? The, the pole was obscuring the door and artificial intelligence has recreated the step and the, 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 the center um, framing of the door. If I click on this um, layer now, we can see before and after. Before, and you can see how this pole obscures the door and the artificial intelligence has done a really good job. This next image, I want to try and remove the people. So I'm just left with the, the athlete. And again, I'm working on a um, transparent layer to work non-destructively. So let's use the um, remove tool and see if we can remove some of these people. I'm just going to go round them roughly. And um, sometimes it works that the selection is completed and closed off, but this time I'm having to paint across all of the people like this um, and um, this is where the overlay helps. Um, you need to get a little bit of this arm here. Um, you can actually change the opacity of the overlay if you want to reduce it 
or if you want to make it uh, even deeper, you can use this slider here for um, opacity. I think something like that is probably suitable for most purposes. So let's click the blue check mark to commit, and um, it's actually done quite a reasonable job. I mean, it seems to have created some content here along the wall. Um, I don't know what it is, and nobody else knows what it is, but it's got rid of the people. So let's try this um, second guy here, just do him separately and click the blue check mark and he's gone. And we're just left with this third man on the edge of the um, photo. Click the blue check mark and he's been replaced as well and the, um, the lamppost remains. Incredible. I'm just going to press see if I can tidy this up a little bit. And... Maybe just bring in some of the green foliage by selecting part of it. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I think that's uh, pretty cool. So I'll save that um, photo, but let's just have a look before and after by clicking the eyeball on the transparent layer. That's before with the people, and that's after with the people gone and the new content added. I've always found the spot healing tool with um, Content Aware to do uh, to do a good job. So uh, let's do a quick comparison by selecting this uh, golf ball and um, and shadow and use the um, spot healing tool. And then we'll try it with the new remove tool. So that's that. And you tend to get this blurriness with the Content aware for some reason and it needs a lot of cleaning up it obviously does work and um, I've used it lots of times in the past so let's um, undo that and um, let's uh, try and use the new tool again let's work on a separate layer non-destructively and go back to the remove tool the chat box is already um, activated so let's um, use this uh, Tool. I think I need to increase the cursor slightly and let's just go around this wall and around the shadow and there it fills in for me on this one because it's a complete circle and click remove and I think that's done a fantastic job you know it's respected the depth of field and the focus of the grass in the foreground and there's no um, nothing left behind so I really think this new tool this um, AI powered remove tool is a real game changer. This is a photo from Paris, L'Hôtel des Invalides, which is a former um, hospital and chapel. It's now used as a military museum and it houses the tomb of Napoleon. So it's a typical um, travel photo and I want to try and remove the tourists. So I'm going to um, reduce the size of the cursor and just start painting over. The people, come set. And I'm going to do them all and then click the commit and see whether it does a good job of removing every single one of them. A few over here that need to be removed. Another one there, another one there. Another one there, and another one there. So let's click the checkbox. And voila, they're all gone, which is pretty good. Um, let me um, see if I've missed anything. Um, I think there's a couple sitting here in front of these um, pillars. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. And just move the photo around. And yeah, as I thought, there is... Um, a couple sitting here on the ground. Let's try and remove them. And they've gone and the pillars are unaffected. Let's remove this object. Perfect. A little bit of clean up here. And I think that's looking pretty, pretty good. There's no more people. They've all gone. I uh, missed somebody here, so let's Let's take care of these. And let's fit the photo back onto the workspace. And there we have it. All the tourists have disappeared. This next example is a little bit unusual. It's not every day 
we want to remove a fence from a photo, but I wanted to demonstrate the power of this um, tool with a little bit of lateral thinking and um, doing the job in small stages. We can get quite good results. So let's um, select the remove tool. So I've already set the cursor fairly small and I'm going to just uh, drag now over the wires. Just using the mouse and I've strayed a little bit there. So I'm going to just keep this box unchecked, which is the remove after each stroke. So I can actually just look at the um, bits that perhaps need to be taken out. I'm going to just subtract a little bit here because I've I've strayed with the um, and change back to add and do this piece again and stick into the wire and then let's click the blue check mark and as you can see that's removed that part of the fence. So let's go back up here again and again trying to keep it fairly straight on the wire. Again I've strayed but let's click the blue check mark and it does a reasonable job. Let's do it over these pieces here. As you can see, it's quite slow and tedious, but it is doing a, a pretty good job and um, protecting the face at the same time. Um, sometimes you have to go over things more than once. I'm going to just keep going like this. This has left something behind, so I need to do this part again. And don't be afraid to go over something that you've... Um, already previously selected just to improve the results. I think some of these are actually shadows left behind from the from the fence. Let's do this top part and click the blue check mark each time. The one in the hair Yeah, I think this is doing quite a good job. It's not, um, it's it's very time consuming. I mean, if you had something complicated like this, you could take more time to do it than I'm I'm doing it here. Again, I'm going to just enlarge on the brush so I can uh, get rid of the shadow and um, also include some of the skin tones. And that's done a better job actually. I think here yeah, altogether. So let's. Um, just reset the cursor size again. I'm just using the right and left bracket keys to resize and um, start removing some more of the fence. It's a slow process, but it is it is working. Let's do this, which is close to his eye. Yeah, I'm actually quite pleased with the results that I'm getting on the um, on the face. Now I'm going to remove the the hand entirely. So let's just increase the the cursor size again and um, and paint it entirely over the um, the hand and a bit of this shadow as well. I'm trying to stay away from the ear. I don't want any part of the ear removed. So let's just do something like that. And let's click the blue check mark again. And that's done a pretty good job, although I need to come down and remove this part here, which has been left behind. It's one of those very delicate jobs which, bit by bit, we start to get the result that we want, although it's very time consuming, as you can see. And we're gradually getting there, retaining his ear. Okay, let's try this other hand. Just paint all the way over it. I 
Okay, let's see what happens. And press the blue check mark. And again, he's done a little, he's done a pretty good job. This needs tidying up here. So as you can see, it's, it, it's slow, slow but sure, but I'm starting to get the portrait that I want beginning to appear. So I'm going to um, reduce the cursor size again there to make it um, quite small. And um, I'll, I'll continue um, doing this, but rather than keep you watching tediously, I will speed up the video and um, come back to you once, it's, uh, once I've completed it all. So there's the finished results. Um, as I say, it's quite a tedious job. It's not perfect, but it just shows you the the power of this tool if you break down the job into smaller sections. Even something as complex as a wire fence can be removed. Um, I think I went a little bit too far over his nose, but I think for the purpose of this demo, you get the idea. This one is a slightly better second attempt and um, as you can see part of the speeded up process was cropping away the arms having already removed the hands with this new tool. I hope you like it, hope you have some fun removing objects from your own photos and until next time, thanks for watching.